I think recreation has the potential to be a major economic engine for rural America. And I want to underline potential because I think people really haven't had a sense to capture what this could be all about. In Oregon not long ago, a young man came up to me and said he was making kayaks and he's got a big market for these kayaks, not just in Oregon, but he told me he's looking to export them around the world. So this is a value added kind of commodity. And I think there is so much uh, potential uh, here and the challenges in the days of the smartphone to bring the permitting system and the regulatory systems in line with you know, the times. And that's what a former House Chairman Rob Bishop and I have done with what we call the R&R bill, recreation, not red tape. And I got into this when I saw as the recreation season uh, was beginning a couple of years ago that people would call me at home and they'd say they got up in the middle of the night to call some agency and they were put on hold and then after they waited a long time, they were told to call somebody else. And I gather that uh, Dr. O'Keefe has been walking people through some of these friendly, wonderful, enjoyable experiences as well. And we can do better. And that's what we did in the R&R bill. And much of it has absolutely nothing to do with being partisan. I mean, it's not Democratic or Republican to modernize the regulatory system so at least, at least it gets into the relevant century because what we got today really has remnants of, uh, of yesteryear. So I think what I'd like you to do, Dr. O'Keefe, because you have spent a lot of time in these precincts arguing that smart policy could really be an economic magnet for rural areas. Tell us a little bit about what your perspective is on how the federal government is uh, handling the current system with respect to oversight of the recreation system. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you, Mr. Wyden. Thank you for the question, and thank you for your leadership and everyone on this committee on, on S-47, and particularly all the wild and scenic rivers. Um, you know, as you know, you come from a state with a lot of wild and scenic rivers, and we have a we're lot try, of... We're trying to catch Senator Murkowski in Alaska. You're, you're we're, getting, we're, com we're coming on. You're getting close. Thank you. Um, so you have a lot of rivers in the state, and there's a lot of interest in realizing business opportunities on those rivers. You know, I shared a story earlier. I've got a whole boatload of these, but you've got, um, you know, constituents in the Portland area that are interested in, in providing guiding opportunities, taking people from outside the state, introducing them to the, the great rivers of Oregon. Now, I can go down to Ecuador, and I can hire a guide in Ecuador, and we can go all over the country and explore different places. It's extremely difficult to do that in Oregon if you want to set up a business to be able to do it. And as you articulated, you know, the systems in place are very antiquated. antiquated. It requires you know, going in person to the offices, literally tracking people down. Um, I really appreciate, uh, you know, what you've done, you know, in sort of launching this discussion with the Recreation Not Red Tape Act and doing so in a bipartisan fashion. Because I sit here today and I listen to the issues that we're discussing, and, you know, these aren't, aren't partisan issues. And, you know, helping, helping rural economies and helping people get outside, I think that's something that we can all agree on. And so, you know, given the leadership that really came out of this committee to uh, launch a bipartisan discussion on public lands and conservation issues, I think we can do the same thing on recreation. And I really appreciate you, um, the chair and the ranking member, holding this hearing. And uh, I, I think we can do some great work together. Well, well said. Look forward to working with all five of you. Thank you, Madam Chair.